Musical set theory is a system for labeling and understanding all chords and scales. In this first episode of the Set Theory Simplified series, we'll be comparing traditional music theory to set theory to understand why set theory is worth learning. Traditional music theory has what I call a tonal-centric perspective, which is to say that its concepts, and even its language, centers around the major scale and major chord. Ever notice how we only use seven letters to label 12 different notes? Or how the layout of the piano is made to show us the C major scale using the white keys? That's because the whole system of traditional music theory uses the major scale and major chord as a standard for normalcy and all the other notes as derivations. Let's consider how problematic this system is for labeling a simple three note chord with the pitches C, F sharp, and B. Lead sheet notation presupposes that we have a third and fifth in our chord, so first we'll have to label no third, no fifth, then label the F sharp as an extension sharp 11, and the B as a major 7. This label is cumbersome and counterintuitive, especially when you compare it to the simple label we'd use for this chord in set theory, 3-5. The difference is that lead sheet notation is practically only equipped to describe chords that closely resemble major chords with major scale extensions, while set theory can describe all chords with simple labels. So why does traditional music theory rely so heavily on the major chord and scale when there are so many more possibilities that it fails to describe well? Admittedly, the major scale is very special. It's built by stacking fifths, which is the most consonant interval, which leads to it being the most consonant and even scale, making it ideal for voice leading and practical use in music. Using traditional theory to describe music based strictly off the major scale and its modes is totally useful and fine. The issue is that in the 20th century we stopped making music that strictly uses the major scale. Composers started experimenting with novel scales, and jazz cats started experimenting with extension chords outside of the major scale. My favorite composer Scriabin began writing music around 1910 that exclusively used chords and scales outside of the major scale. He would consistently use particular chords like the mystic chord, which makes set theory the appropriate method of analysis for his late era music. Before outlining what we will learn from set theory, let's dispel some common misconceptions about set theory. Set theory is 12-tone serialism. While they both have to do with atonal music, the 12-tone system is about using all 12 tones, while set theory is about labeling and understanding a particular group of pitches. Set theory is only for analyzing random-sounding, ugly atonal music. I'll be the first to say, I don't care for random-sounding music like Schoenberg's atonality. Set theory is used to add structure to atonal music so that we can emphasize particular musical patterns over others. If you like Scriabin's late era music, or exotic jazz harmony, or just like understanding chords and scales in general, you can learn a lot from set theory. Set theory is a difficult mathematical exercise with no practical application to music. Perhaps this is true in some university classes, but not on this channel. I've adapted the teachings of set theory to make them simpler, less math oriented, and more practical. For example, in old school set theory, they turn all the pitches into numbers, but I keep the traditional letter pitch names to keep it simple and easier to apply to actual music. Lastly, here are the three steps to our understanding of set theory. Labeling. We learn to apply labels to sets. Properties. We understand the properties of sets when we look them up. Context. We understand the larger context in which a set is situated in. In summary, traditional music theory is based around the major scale, and set theory can help us learn about all the other chords and scales that are outside of the major scale. Set theory isn't for ugly music or some overly mathematical system, it's for gaining practical knowledge about the larger universe of chords and scales. What are your initial thoughts and questions on set theory? Let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon.